All right, on this episode of Bouts Talk and Bouts, going to shout out the sponsors real quick. Sovereign Extracts, you can check out some great CBD cartridges, THC. They got hybrid options for the cartridges as well, CBD oils and the like. Also, USG Canada, putting out great apparel for boxers, MMA fighters, and for fans alike. We've got a big fight coming up here. It goes on Yas Island in Abu Dhabi. It's going down July 25th. We've got Nicholas Dalby taking on a returning Jesse Ronson. And I've got Jesse on the show right now. How's your day going there so far, man? Uh, good, man. The day started off great. Did a uh, FST stretch session for an hour and then went to the gym, worked out for an hour. Gonna just finish eating, you know, doing some laundry. Gonna take a nap, walk my dogs, and go back to the gym and work out again. Yeah, presumably you're getting in a fair bit of work at Adrenaline. Am I correct in thinking that's where you're applying your trade, putting in the work there? Yeah, Adrenaline and Hamilton. Oh, so tight. Traveling to Hamilton. So no car issues this camp then, or not so much? No what? No car issues. I was just making a joke because some past interviews, it seems oh, like you've had a couple car the, issues. The car, the car <laughs> has been good so far, knock on wood. Now that you said that, it's probably going to screw up. Yeah, well, I'll... Uh, yeah, I'll foot, I'll foot the bill if something if something comes up there because I might have kind of jinxed you there. But I'm kind of curious as to the you know timeline for all of this fight as far as like when you figured out this particular opportunity would come up. Obviously, there was a certain injury you know in this fight and a step up opportunity here. It seems like Daniel Rubenstein was putting in a fair bit of work. What did the timeline look like for like reintegrating you into the UFC picture? Uh, what do you mean the timeline? Like when did you initially hear about all of this? I guess. Yeah. Like when did you initially hear about all of this and like get a oh, sense I of? I found out uh, ten thirty at night on Canada Day. Oh. Yeah. And then uh, he just pretty much told me, "This is what you're doing on this day, and or sorry, this is who you're fighting on this day at this weight." And I'm like, "Yes." And he goes, "No, no, I already said yes. You're doing it." And I was like, "Okay." He's like, "For the amount of bitching and complaining you did, you're fucking doing it. I don't care." <laughs> and I was like, "Okay, sounds good." And I was like, UFC, right? And he's like, of course, you idiot. No one else is putting on fights in Abu Dhabi. <laughs> I'm like, all right, let's go. Let's get it done. So then I told my coaches and then uh, waited for all the paperwork to come in, which was the next day, and filled all that shit out. Did everything that I had to do December 2018 all over again. <laughs> so well, it was a breeze, though. At least uh, I was comfortable doing it this time because I, I knew what I needed to do. Yeah, and how does that feel just with all the context considered? Like you mentioned the December 2018 instance where it seemed so close to you getting back into the UFC picture, you could almost taste it. And then obviously certain things popping up there. And like I mentioned, Daniel Rubenstein subsequently trying to, you know, put the feelers out to UFC. Like how does it feel just with all that context, like now being ready to get back into the, the octagon and everything? It feels great. <clears throat> you know, I've been toiling around internationally and on the local scene i've been doing everything fighting everywhere uh doing all i can for the last six years to finally get back and now i'm finally back i feel like this is where i belong you know no more small paydays no more local shows no more nothing finally and you know i'm more mature i'm more ready and i'm better than i ever was when i was in the ufc the first time i was a two-stripe white belt with wrestling defense that's it and just a striker now I'm an even better striker, a two-stripe brown belt, and I'm a very good wrestler as I just out-wrestled a D1 wrestler and submitted a jiu-jitsu black belt. So, you know, I feel more comfortable, more mature now, and it's it's time. I just feel like everything's come together and it's time. Now is the time. Yeah, I mean, I imagine that last win had to have bolstered your confidence a fair bit. Like, I thought it was interesting that you were talking about, you know, potentially like if, if there was a loss in that fight, retiring from that so i imagine just those factors considered it's it probably was like a huge boost of confidence to get back into the picture in that kind of way because that was a you know as quintessential of a performance as you could have i'd imagine yeah i wasn't you know if that was if i would have lost that fight i probably would have retired because that would have been the third time i lost three in a row uh would have been my 11th loss um you know at 34 years old it's like okay dude it's it's time to give it up like you know you still feel good, but you know it's going to take... You're not going anywhere meaningful, a.k.a. you're just going to be fighting for peanuts. Locally, you'll be a gatekeeper, et cetera, et cetera. So, but I, I wasn't ready to... So I gave everything I had for that fight. like I Because I know I'm better than ever, and I know I still got a few more years left, so might as well put them in the UFC where, where, where I can make some bank and get a bigger name because, yeah, I'm not ready to retire yet. But I would have had I had lost because... You know, it's just it, it just the way the things are. But you know how 
how I won against who I won. Uh, just it just proves that I, I'm ready for this, and it's it's time to go. Yeah, and it seems like just this foray at welterweight, uh, you know, as compared to last time, because it seemed like there was like a bit of a kind of a short notice sort of thing with like the PFL fight where you were almost like at the 170 mark without doing any kind of cut. Like, it seems like for this one, you have more of like a, I guess, a welterweight kind of frame and more prepared in that regard. Is that a fair characterization? Oh, oh for sure. I I even told, like, when I emailed, I've been harassing Sean Shelby, which wasn't a good thing. <laughs> but I told him, I'm like, look, man, I'm training hard, but I'm not dieting. I'm eating, and I'm eating four times a day. I'm eating well. Like, my weight's up there. And I told him, I walk around 190, and... Uh, uh, I think one of the emails I sent him was like, I'm 195 right now, so if you want me to do short notice, it'll be it'll have to be at 170. And I'm like, yeah, that's how it's going to go. When I got the call for this fight, um, I, I was, because I've been starting to die, because of Ryan Ford, he posted this thing online at the end, in May. So like May 28th, I started dieting and getting down, so my weight was low. And literally as soon as that, like two days after that diet ended, um I got the call for the UFC and I was like, holy shit, what perfect timing. I My weight's low now, but I'm still big, like 185, so I still got some weight to cut. Uh, I think I'll be 183 by the end of this week, 181 by the end of next week, and then, you know, just with doing some PVL watertight, uh, which is a, a substance that is USADA approved, because I, I asked them. Uh, I'll probably get down to about 77, 76, and it'll be an easy five-pound water cut, and then I'll be able to rehydrate back up to 185, between 185 and 188. Whereas, like I said, like you just said, with the PFL, uh, three weeks out, I was 172. I was like, holy shit! So I was, yeah. I, I was going to marble slab, eating ice cream, I was eating pizza, you know, twice a week, trying to get my weight up. But if my metabolism was firing too much, like I, it didn't. I didn't cut any weight for that fight. In fight night, I was like 174, 175, which was just, that's just not not good for a welterweight. Yeah, and specific to this matchup here, I'm kind of curious what your thoughts are on your opponent here because it seems like he's doing some, you know, pretty all right things too. I've got the victory over Alex Oliveira via unanimous decision, has, has held certain gold in the Cage Warriors promotion and whatnot, unbeaten through the last five outings. And yeah, it seems like he's like a pretty well-rounded guy, all things considered. Like, have you really checked out like much tape on your opponent or more so just focused on what you're doing heading into the fight? Oh yeah, I always, I, I have to watch tape. I got to watch one or two fights just to see, I have to see what he does, right? Do I break it down do i do anything no i just i just need to see him see how he reacts see what goes down so i usually try to watch a fight where they lose and a fight where they win and uh I, if the fight where they lose i try to make sure it's a three-round fight not just like a quick submission loss or whatever and then the fight where they win i try to do the same thing i try to keep it recent just so it's in my head but then i leave the rest to my coaches whereas uh that that fight with Oliveira was a gift because in the third round that's the fight that i watched and uh uh, it was 1-1 going into the third. Oliveira gets on top of him and spends like a minute and a half on top of him. And then finally, for like 30 seconds, he's just giving him little shots, which is enough to stay busy, to stay on top. And then the ref's like, all right, stand up, stand up. Like Paul Felder and the rest of the announcers are like, oh, my God, that was such a bad call. That was such a gift for Dolby. Like, this is like this is Dolby's moment. And then obviously Dolby gets him down and then stays on top of him. So had the ref not stood them up, Dolby would have lost that fight for sure. But, you know, it was in Denmark, and he is from Denmark, so you can understand with the crowd booing, the ref was like, all right, well, whatever, I'll just throw my boy a freaking, throw him a bone here, which was bullshit, but it is what it is. Dolby, Dolby is a good striker, but he's not an idiot. Um, if he gets, if he's losing in the striking, he will shoot for takedowns. He's decent on the ground, he's got good pressure, it's a similar style to our style, so I'll know how to deal with it, and uh, yeah, I'm just really looking forward to it. Speaking of throwing a bone, though, it looks like you got some pretty lovely dogs on the old Instagram there. Who's puppy sitting while you're going to fight Island? Uh, my mom. My mom's going to watch Mr. Blue. He's sitting right here. My 130-pound Malamute. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Seems like you, you know, have a lot of fun with that. Good having that kind of you know, camaraderie and everything like that. I'm kind of wondering about the, obviously this isn't going to be like a post-fight kind of situation there, but like when you get back home maybe after the fight, is any, you know, Doughboys London in the future there, are they open yet at this point? I know that's a bit of a, you know, favorite celebration kind of meal for you. Oh yeah, they're open. I, uh, I was talking to Zach the other day at the gym. He showed up. Zach is the owner of Doughboys and because I have to self-isolate for 14 days when I get back, he's fully prepared to deliver oh, uh, as go. soon as I get back. 
He's like, yeah, just uh, he's like, as soon as you send me your post fight victory text, he's like, let me know what you want and when you're going to be home. And he's like, and I'll have it waiting for you. And I was like, that's awesome. So is that like one part of the big plans for like the two week quarantine after, or are you getting up to some other things? Like, like what does Jesse Ronson do while quarantining? I guess. Well, I can't go anywhere. All I like, I'm stuck inside, so I'm gonna, you know, sleep a lot, uh, watch a lot of TV, play a lot of computer games because I don't have an Xbox or PlayStation. I have a pretty high end PC gaming computer, and uh, play a lot of video games, watch a lot of TV, and uh, yeah, sleep a lot eat a lot just you know i'll probably come out looking like a, a butterball piece of shit <laughs> what pc games are you ripping though i know my brother is like pretty big into the pc games like what are some of the what are some of the favorites i guess well the game that i'm currently into right now is uh it's kind of like league of legends but it's called heroes of the storm it's blizzard uh the company blizzard so it's like all the all the games that they released it's like certain iconic characters from there those are the heroes that you can play and you battle down three lanes or two lanes for an objective and try and smash the other person's face. It's super fucking fun. I am pretty heavily addicted to this game. No, it's awesome. Perfect thing to have for something like a, like a quarantine when you're kind of just, you know, hanging out after, but as far as like some of the travel for something like this and just who you're you having in your corner, like who's going to be like the people, you know, that are cornering you for this fight and like, who's like coming along for the travel and everything. Uh, Jesse Goff is coming with me. He's my uh, jiu-jitsu coach. And Daniel Rubenstein, my manager, is already down there. He's going to be there. He's uh, like a lifelong wrestler. Uh, he's been in a few – he's probably – he's got like 15 guys fighting in Yaz Island. You'll see him in Peter Yan's corner. Like he's got a lot of fight experience. He's very good in the corner, so I look forward to having those two in my corner. And uh, those are the only two people that will be with me. I mean, obviously, like with like being on – Yaz Island, there seems to be like that, you know, quarantine in your room to get the test results period for uh, a couple days or a day or so. But is there any, I guess, desire to kind of like wander around the island a little bit? You're going to be doing any like pseudo touristy kind of stuff or not so much in that regard? In there. Uh, when I was in Abu Dhabi in 2015, I went there twice. I've already went. That's where Ferrari World is in the water park. I've already seen it. <laughs> but it's, it's not a big deal to me. But uh, yeah, when, once I'm finally allowed out of my room, because when we get there, we get tested and then we have to quarantine for 12 to 24 hours. Uh, when the results come back and then we're allowed, like as soon as those results come back, we go down and get tested again. But then we're allowed to walk around and wander around, which is what I'm going to do because we're pent up in a hotel room. I'm going to want to, you know, go to the beach, maybe get in the water. Who the hell knows? Like just get a little bit of exercise in and then, uh, yeah, just chill out. Get some sun because nobody cheers for the pasty guy. <laughs> Yeah, getting a little bit of a tan probably not going to hurt too much and everything. But, I mean, I'm kind of curious about, like, the medicals and stuff heading into this one. I imagine Faisal Rahman is coming in pretty clutch here just with this. Obviously, you have a bit of notice, but he seems to come in clutch in certain spots like this for getting medicals pretty quickly. Yeah, everything, all my medicals are still valid uh, from when I did them last. The only thing that I need to do is an ophthalmologist exam, which I have tomorrow at 2 o'clock. So, yeah, he, he was. I called him. I'm like, yo, this is the email they sent me. This is what they need. So he sent them my medicals. And okay, well, everything's good. We just need an ophthalmologist. And then they sent me the forms. And like, just get this done. And so Faisal booked it. And I'm going tomorrow, 2 p.m. No, it's awesome, man. And yeah, it seems like there's a lot of momentum going into this. And yeah, just a, a long time coming for sure. But I want to be mindful of that, you know, nap you're looking to take and the remainder of your schedule. So is there anything you'd like to add as a parting thought as we're wrapping up here? Oh, not really, man. Just uh, it's been a busy couple of, or a busy week since uh, getting the call. You know, everybody is coming out of the woodworks to do interviews. Like, obviously, I'm going to do one with you because you were wanted to do. You've been doing interviews with me before any of this big stuff happened. But yeah, like uh, my Instagram blew up with so many people. Like, yo, let's get an interview in. Let's do this. And yeah, it's it's just getting super annoying. It's like every day <clears throat> my phone's going off and random numbers are calling, and I'm like, shit. Did I agree to an interview? Who is this? Like this <laughs> random number? Like it's area codes that I'm unfamiliar with. And I'm like, God damn it! I'll just leave it. If it's important, they'll leave a message. Um, but yeah, it's just uh, hectic, and, and now it's finally starting to calm down, and uh, I can really start focusing on the training. So I got probably one, one more week or a week and a half of hard training left before I get get uh, go from Toronto to Vegas, get tested, quarantine, Vegas to Abu Dhabi, so on and so forth. Yeah, well, I appreciate the sentiment, man. I always have enjoyed talking to you before your different fights with, like, you know, TKO and BTC and PFL. And good to see, 
you're back on the UFC stage. Definitely been a long time coming, and people can finally check out that fight July 25th. Goes on Yas Island in Abu Dhabi. We've got Nicholas Dalby taking on Jesse Ronson. Thanks, as always, for the time there, man. Best of luck with the remaining part of the preparations, and yeah, just have a good rest of your day, too. All right, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Have a good day.